I am going to have this recorded. So hey, it's Thursday, y'all. Y'all know what time it is. Come on now. Hey, yes, yes. It's neighborhood jams. Uh. You are tuned in to Neighborhood Jams with Sonny Ponsil. With 12 years real estate experience, seven years as a realtor, four years teaching home buyer workshops, and two years as podcasting, I'm bringing the do's and don'ts to real estate right here on the podcast. You can have special guest appearance from credit mentor, lenders, insurance agents, inspectors, and title reps. So you don't want to miss today's episode. Tune in as we're jamming right here on Neighborhood Jams with Sonny Ponsil. Good day, good day, good day to you guys. You already know what today is. It is Neighborhood Jams with Sunny Pouncil, and I am super excited to be with you all today with special guests. Let me get here situated on my Instagram page. Hey, you guys. Hey, everybody on Instagram. How are you guys? Yes, so I, was, I guess I'll try to have something where I can set this up. But, you know, it's one of those things where I want to make sure that you have a good glimpse of some of this information, right? Let me get this set up here. This camera is what I'm trying to do here. Oh, 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 oh. I want you guys to catch this, this beautiful person that's right here. Yeah, that's Miss Paula Roberts. Hello. See if I can get where I can get that to share, save, or look. Ah, Y'all, I'm trying to get it worked out here. Y'all should see me. I'm over here really trying to get this propped up here. Uh oh, that surely didn't work. Okay, let's see. Oh, that surely didn't work either. Let's try that part, huh? How about that? I know you guys got a glare on Instagram, but I, the whole point is I want you to get the information, right? So get the information, tap in. This is Neighborhood Jams with Sunny Pencil. I'm with my special guest, Miss Paula Roberts from Bay Equity Home Loans. You all, if you are currently a homeowner, if you've ever hear me speak to you, let me make sure I get in my camera. If you've ever heard me speak to you, you know I am speaking in relations of how you can use your equity to either do a refinance, pull cash out, all those other good things. Well, now we got a lender here that can talk to you about some of those things and some other programs. So Miss Paula, with your pretty self, how are you doing today, beautiful? I am fantastic. It's almost Friday. You have I to know. You. Now, listen, I always like to call today Friday Eve. And yeah. so- it, it's a good thing. I appreciate you taking your time to be with me today. And I know it's what it's not the end of the month. It's the beginning of the month. So it's not really, really busy for you guys just yet, oh, right? I'm still recuperating from the end of the month. <laughs> I yeah. know April has been crazy because the market is still hot, wouldn't you agree? Oh, I, I've done this for 30 years. I've never seen anything like this. This is uh, on the purchase side of it. The power that the sellers have now is incredible. It is it's it's amazing and if any of your uh, podcast listeners uh, are trying to buy a house right now I'm sure they know exactly what I'm talking about yes and we do have a few of them that are right now in the market looking to purchase and are just now entering the market and of course the median for Oklahoma is 125,000 to 180,000 so if you're in that market it's extremely hot for you you can't keep a house on the market in that price point for 24 hours it's already gone in two so this is why we're wanting to make sure we take that extra step to educate our community. And so Paula, you have been currently with, with Bay Equity for a little over three years. We were chatting a little bit before the podcast and basically it, it, it was a company that was bought out, but what, what is it that as a senior loan officer, what type of programs is the hottest programs that you're working with right now? One of the most popular ones that we do is the down payment assistance uh, loan. We work with Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency um, and Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency will gift you, actually give it to you, uh, your down payment on an FHA loan uh, is three and a half percent of the purchase price. So let's say you're buying a hundred thousand dollar house. The down payment is thirty five hundred dollars and OFA will give you three and a half percent of the loan amount towards your down payment. So it's all, it covers almost all of your down payment. Now you, you still have your closing costs, 
but the down payment section of it is taken care of, which is, which is really cool. That is awesome. And that's yeah. why we're explaining to buyers how you don't have to have that 20% down. Oh, no. If you, if, oh, no. if you were qualified with a 640 lease credit score, and I try to educate my buyers to have at least two of the middle scores, right? In, in the 640s, because I mean, it's no longer trying to have just one. Have two, so that way when you're working with lenders such as yourself, then at least the one, the third one can be the lowest one and you got to pick out of the two highest ones, right? So we we take the middle of the three. Yes. 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 So what are current interest rates utilizing with down payment assistance? Uh, They're in the low threes. Okay. They're great. They're phenomenal. So they haven't scratched in the hot, in the mid threes yet, like 3.5 or anything like that? Uh, They may bump up and then bump down. Um, Interest rates are a little more constant in the down payment assistance because uh, OFA is what we that's the acronym for Oklahoma Housing Finance Agency. They set the interest rate. So that is the interest rate, whether I do the loan or whether you check with 20 other lenders that do the loan. Right. That is the interest rate. Right. Uh, the other thing with OFA you're going to find generally is that most um, larger banks, your national banks, don't participate. So they have it set just for local lenders here in Oklahoma, and, that, and that's who they like to use. Okay. Okay. And so with the interest rates, and I mean, some people think OFA, you know, I I laugh at people when they don't understand that OFA is not just housing for rental, that they truly have another department here with down payment assistance. So why in the world would you even judge that situation? Just go ahead and go with it. We do have up to three points. Oh, 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 it's and your your max purchase price is like $352,000. I mean, you can get a mat and yeah, and still qualify for it. So if your middle score is a, a 640 and everyone on the loan doesn't make more than $150,000 a year, you may be able to qualify. That's yeah. So 640 credit score. I hope you're all taking notes because if you're not, now's the time to go get them pens and pads, right? Uh-huh. And if your mortgage score, your mortgage score is different than your consumer credit score. Your consumer credit score is what you see when you have your uh, credit monitoring apps, your credit karmas, Equifax, all of that. You're not going to be able to see what your what your mortgage score is. It, it can be different than your consumer credit score. And the only way you're going to know what that is, is to have your mortgage score pulled by a, a mortgage lender. A mortgage lender. You know what? That's, that's something that you speak about that because that's something that I don't even recall that being a factor back in my mortgage lending days, but that was before 2006 happened. So, you know, we were doing all kinds of stuff back in that time frame. I wasn't affected directly, but what got me out of it, it was, it was tough to get people qualified. You know, they had oh, yeah. the government started streaking in down on the guidelines. And so uh, it was tough for me to get people qualified. So I got out of the real estate and hopped over into um, over in the uh, real estate side. But it's interesting to know that there is a um, there is a um, a mortgage credit score. And so you said that's different from the consumer credit score that we would normally see. Yep, it's a completely different algorithm that figures it. Wow. And so what does that look like? I mean, is it more intense? Is it similar to our credit? I mean, does it, is it, it's, not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna vary, you know, 50 points, but it, it, most of the time I see it come in a little lower uh, than when I, you know, when I initially talk to people and they tell me, yeah, you know, I've seen my credit karma score and I've, I've got a 692. Well, when we pull the mortgage side of it, it may be more like a 675 or 680. So it could be slightly different by 50 base points. I don't think it'd be that much. That much? Okay. No, I, I would be surprised if it would be that much. But the point of the matter is why I express, even when we're doing the podcast every Thursday, or even when I'm talking to my home buyer classes, securing the money back is what we're talking about. Yes. I can't secure the money back for you by you reaching out to me as the real estate agent to ask mm-hmm. me, well, hey, this is my scenario. Can you tell me if I'm qualified? I can't give you that answer because that's not my line of work this time. My mm-hmm. line of work is securing the keys. I have the keys to your unique home, right? I don't have the money. So this exactly. right here, Ms. Paula Roberts, is the money. And so she's the one that let's be sure that we give them the rundown of what they're what they're needing to have. You got to have 30 day pay stubs. You need to have at least uh, two years tax returns filed. 
Um, you do need to have um, two months bank statements. Mm -hmm. I like to call it the two, two, two. So two months yeah, bank yeah, statements, two months tax returns, and you know, two months pay stubs, and you should be good. And yeah, course, that's 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 our starting point. That's the start point. Generally, there's going to be more, but to get it started and get um, a pre-qualification, and, and I want to go over the difference between a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. Oh, would you please? Let's yes. educate, because we need to know. Two different animals. So pre-qualification essentially means you've, you've given me your information, I've pulled your credit, your credit score is good enough for whatever program we're looking at, and I'm taking you at your word that you make uh, income is, is what, what you say it is. That's great. Um, the pre-approval goes to the next step. And that's where we're going to ask for those 222 things that you were mentioning. Um, my processor is going to look at the entire file. And if she sees anything else that she sees may be a, a question for an underwriter, and the underwriter is the person that we have to uh, convince that you're great for this loan, she's going to ask you for additional documentation. We're going to get all that together. We're going to send it to the underwriter who gives us the approval. And they're going to go through and look at everything and say, yeah, what, what Sunny told me her income is checks out. She said she has X amount in the bank and she does. Um, her past uh, income is the same and her credit qualifies. So then at that point, we issue what's called a pre-approval letter, which means you've been through underwriting. Okay. In, in today's world, that can be the difference between you getting an offer accepted and not. Having a pre-approval letter is um, more security to a seller because they know you have been through the whole process and you're going to be able to close. Right. A pre-qualification letter doesn't necessarily hold the same weight in the market that we're in now. And it's real tight and sellers are getting, if not above, they're asking sales price. And so what oh. you're basically saying in, 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 the, in the real estate term is that you got to have a pre-approval. You have to show your seller that you're interested in purchasing their home. You are qualified. And like I explained to most of my buyers is that Paula, we're coming to you guys. Not, we're not asking a $5. We're not asking for $10. We're not asking for $1,000. We're asking for over $80,000. So mm -hmm. that constitutes more ways to verify that you, Sonny, you, Instagram, you, Facebook, you, YouTube, whoever's tuning in, that you are qualified to pay that money back. So mm -hmm. understand that there's got to be, you know, as I said to people, if it was me giving you $80,000, you'd have to give me a dr blood, dr blood sample. <laughs> I want to know your mama's social security, your daddy's social security, where they at, where they live, where you hang out, you know, because that's a lot of money to give to somebody and you don't know if you're going to get it back. Exactly. And you, you don't would, have the income to support it or the credit to show you paying your past bills be on time. You're not going to qualify for it. So that's why we're trying to make sure we're taking these extra steps on the podcast to educate that. That's some great information, the difference between a pre-qual letter and a pre-approval. So you know, the difference is you saying it versus you having proof. Exactly. And you'll find, especially in today's world where we're all so busy as lenders, mm -hmm. there aren't a ton of lenders out there who will do the pre-approval process because it's expensive for a lender to, it is. at the time of our process are taken, the time of our underwriter, and, and we don't know that you'll ever close a loan with this. So, so most lenders will, will go to that process once they actually have a contract, once the buyer has actually accepted a contract with a seller. But at Bay, we will take that step now and do a pre-approval so that, so that our buyers have more opportunity to have a, a contract accepted. Okay, okay. So, is, and, and you're absolutely right. There's a lot of lenders that do not want to fool with the pre-approval. They don't want to even put it through the process of the underwriters because there's so much volume mm -hmm. coming in right now because of the low interest rates and because the market is so hot because of the pandemic. So yes, if they're processing over 10,000 loans, your one loan coming through to ask for a pre-approval or for them to process, they're right. likely to turn it down because they have someone that's ready to get qualified and go right. through the underwriting. So they rather give you a pre-qualification letter and let mm -hmm. you come back at a later time. Now, in the contract itself, the sales contract, you generally have 10 calendar days from the day that you get accepted for your offer to produce 
what Ms. Paul is talking about when we're talking about a pre-approval letter, which means it needs to show that you have gone through the underwriting process to be qualified to purchase this home. But you don't want to play with that 10 day window. You want to yeah. have that done and out the way now. So if you run across a lender that has a problem with running you under underwriting, what we call DU, then that's where you want to run to somebody like Paula Roberts so that someone can give you a pre-approval at the beginning and not have to wait a couple of weeks. That's so important because, yeah, you can have a house. Oh, well, she's got a pre-qualification letter. We got a pre-approval. We're going to jump with this pre-approval. Yeah. Now you're automatically out of the game of the offer for that house. I mean, it's just that cut and dry. And sellers can do what they want to do with that at that point. Oh, they, and they are. They are. Uh, we've talked about the down payment assistance being combined that you guys utilize and offer with, with OFAs. That's so awesome. And then now we're talking about the difference between mortgage credit and consumer credit. Mm -hmm. And I'm not the first to knock down any creditors, but let me be sure that you are not trying to bank your credit score off of Credit Karma. Please don't let that be your main source of credit checking, checking your resources. You get a free credit report every year, get it pulled. And as Paula is stating, there's a difference between what you're looking at on your credit versus what they, the mortgage lenders, will look at. So get with the mortgage lender, and that way she can pull your mortgage credit to make sure your mortgage qualified and ready. And then the difference between pre-qual letter and the pre-approval letter. Now, what, what type of programs, what is the hottest program that you're running right now? What loan type? Mostly said but really right now, um, conventional seems to be people are wanting to do more conventional because it it for some reason in a seller's mind, I think I think the agents are driving this. Huh. They, they feel that the seller is more likely to accept a conventional financing offer because it is more difficult to get a conventional loan. So your credit score requirement is higher. Uh, the down payment amount is higher. So they feel like that, that if they're comparing an FHA offer to a, to a conventional offer, that the conventional offer is a stronger buyer and is more likely to close. But we have uh, OFA does uh, conventional loans as well. Yeah, they also even have a, um, I'm trying to make sure I quote it because I have Miss Lisa on here. Uh, where they will give you a 0% interest rate if you had your own money. So she, I know she mentioned that, of course, about some of the programs that they have, but definitely didn't realize that conventional is now taking a more ranking over FHA. Yep. But, and, and I don't, but I'm still, I still have FHA contracts uh, submitted to me all the time. So they're, it's, not a, it's not a be all end all, but that, but that seems to be a trend that I see that, that when uh, an agent calls me and says, hey, I've got a buyer I'm sending to you, we need to get them um, pre-qualified. Yeah. Will you see if they can go conventional? That seems to be what, the, what they want to do. And you know, it's, it's a shame, but uh, let me just call it what I call it and what I'm seeing it. If you're utilizing conventional, it's because you want to have a fly-by-night appraisal. You don't want to have um, all the stipulations that an FHA appraiser would come with when it comes to versus an FHA versus a conventional. What are you talking about, Sonny? Well, FHA wants you to have, for an example, no chip paint on the outside of the house. Now, if you're purchasing a fixer upper, then yes, you should be going conventional because at that point, you don't want the appraisal to be beaten up. But if you're purchasing an existing home that's in well, good condition, I would, if I were you, I'll be going to FHA. I'll be getting the 3.5% plus the down payment assistance. I've had people get in homes as low as $500. Oh yeah. Low as $12 and 12 cents. Yeah. I've had people get back $500. Mm -hmm. So yes, you may have your PMI, but if you have the cash, yeah, that's what you spend your cash up. You pay your PMI off in the beginning. That way you don't have to have that. Cause I know a lot of people are getting educated on that now, but there's ways to kind of help, you know, comfort your ease when it comes to home purchasing but that's interesting that you have a lot more conventional than fha yep wow and and then and i see my va buyers having a hard time too for the same reasons mm -hmm. um because uh, it's well known i think that that va appraisals are a little more difficult so they require more things to be done to the house and and they're probably more conservative on the value and a lot of that is because they're loaning 100 percent of the purchase price and so, uh, see, that's why we uh, got to make sure that we're educating. We got to educate. We got to educate. Well, what other information do you have that you would like to share as Nugget Wise today, Ms. Paula? 
Well, um, let me share with you some of the things that I see agents doing that are uh, getting offers accepted to be competitive. I mean, there, there are times I've got agents who have houses listed day one and they have 15 offers on them. I mean, it, it is crazy out there. It is. Yeah. And if you're, and it, and it doesn't matter, it doesn't seem to matter what price range. I mean, that's everything from 170 up to 356,000. Yes. And, and I have seen so much cash in the market of people losing out on offers to cash. Yes. I don't know where all the cash has suddenly come from. It was, it hasn't been around for the last 29 years, but now all of a sudden, I don't know if mom and dad are all paying cash now. And then the kids are paying them back. I, I don't know, but. That anyway, might be that money man Biden has did all that money. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, but, but there's, he hasn't given me that kind of cash, but some. I don't right. Know. I'm still working for mine. I'm still waiting on the first yeah. stimulus check. So <laughs> I got the first one. So I'm. Okay, whatever. So I'm done counting. I'm it's playing Russian roulette at the mailbox, waiting for it. Is it here? Is it here? No, it's not here. Okay, it's here. Balance. Check that balance. <laughs> right, right. So some of the things that I'm seeing are um, escalation clauses. Where you know, I've been hearing about this escalation clauses. It is, and all of this stuff is really popular on the coasts and has been for a while, and it's kind of made its way here. Uh, the escalation clause where someone says they will pay a dollar over what the highest bid is. Um, so I've, I've also heard some agents say they don't like that and they don't want to see those. Um, I've had three offers accepted that I'm working on now where the buyer agreed to pay a certain dollar amount of the seller's closing costs. What? Yes. You know, I heard about that too. I was in one of my real estate training classes and one of the instructors talked about that. You should have seen the, the class just gasp for air like, huh? When it you works. Yes. But you know what? It can happen in a scenario where the seller has no funds, but enough cash to cash out and pay their, their, their realtor's fees and pay off their mortgage, but no cash for them to walk away from the table with. So kudos for those buyers that are coming in with a little hard cash. I don't know where you're getting it from. We don't care. Uh, but still, we, don't, we go back to that question. Where's all this cash coming as from? As long as it's verifiable, right? As long as uh -huh. yep. you can verify it's sourced in season for what, 60 days, 90 days? Days. 60 days, 60 days, no, no cash. We don't, if, if you have a sock full of hundred dollar bills that you think you're going to walk into closing and use for your down payment, that is not happening. It's got to be put in the bank and seasoned for 60 days. Yeah. Yep. So all you guys that got your money in your mattress, pull it out the mattress and go put it in the bank and let it sit there for 60 days. That's going to take you to find your house anyway. So Go on and put yeah. it up in there. That might need to be my question to start asking. If you have some money that you need to put to the side that you have been saving, is it in the bank? Can it be source and season? So, yeah. Right. And, and that is to uh, go along with the Patriot Act. So back in the 90s, we used to have to do that because of the drug cartels. And we had to make sure that the money was not drug money that was being yes. used. Now with the Patriot Act, it is to ensure against state-sponsored terrorism that that money is not being used uh, to purchase homes in America. So that is why we have to source and season every dollar that goes into a purchase transaction. It makes sense. Yeah, makes e sense. Even if you're getting a gift, uh, if you're getting a gift from mom and dad, we're going to want to see their bank statement to make sure that they had the money to give you, that they truly had the cash in their bank to give you. And mom and dad sometimes get a little, little burr in their saddle about that. But that's that's the way it goes. It's it's the golden rule. He who has the money or he who has the gold makes the rule. Yeah, <laughs> that's <right>. the rule. <laughs> and we don't make them rules. No, I don't make the rule. I I did I just I am just the messenger. <laughs> right, right. I was about to say, don't hate the messenger. No, no. I'm just, I'm just relating the message. Well, that's good information to know. And so some buyers, I know they kind of question, why is it that I can't come with my cash? I have ten thousand dollars saved. Okay, well if you do. Put it in the bank. Get a source and season 60 days. That's awesome. Um, so what other great news of how to get an offer accepted? That that what other interesting there's a lot of people that are that are will just agree up front to pay X amount of dollars over what it appraises for. 
Yes. So now as a lender's perspective, what does that look like to you guys with the lend appraisal that comes in at 200,000 and a buyer's willing to pay 205 for that home? What, I mean, as long as they have the cash to close that, and we have verified it, we're fine with it. Wow. Yep. So yep. it's no longer worried about purchasing a home that has a value. If you want that home, we're going to put, we're going to tell you like Beyonce told the single ladies, <laughs> if you want the house, you better put a contract on it. Right. <laughs> That's right. Don't That's play. Right. That's right. Don't play with the housing industry. It, the, yeah. Them houses gone like men in the market. So don't play. Yep. Yep. So yeah, there's, there's all kinds of uh, interesting things that are going on to get buyers in houses, but it is, if, if you're in the 250 and below in Oklahoma city, in that price range, you better buckle up because it is competitive out there. It really is. Hey, yes. let me let me add this while you're speaking about the 250 price point. That's the price point I'm actually at right now, which is I'm grateful to God. I busted my my behind for seven years to get here, and I'm super excited. So everything I'm coming in my pipeline is in that that price point. And so it's funny that you say that, but let me go ahead and add so that people can also understand that it's not just existing. Brand new build homes are now becoming a hot market. Okay, so again, if you saw the land and you want that lot, if you like it, you better put a contract on it. I'm just saying. Um, I do. You, can I? Can I? Can I say a specific builder's name on on the podcast? Absolutely. Do you have one that you like to you recommend or a book? Oh, I'm just saying this is this is this is my understanding. I've heard from a couple of different agents that uh, homes by Tabor and he builds in that range, they are now taking bids on new construction homes. They're taking bids? Yes. I'm gonna have to call Tabor because now that's a new one on me. Yep, they are. So if, if he's got a house on the ground that's ready to be moved into in 30 days, he's taking multiple offers on it. Before that wasn't the case, it was first come first serve. Right, right. And see, I've always been a Tabor girl because I've actually had the privilege of interviewing him on hand, you know, off. I was there for a broker's opening and I caught him. And of course, you know, I'm like, I'm always sharing about your houses. And so what can you share with me? And I mean, he unleashed about the drive him and his wife had and how he built his homes and how his wife helped build some of the homes and the safety features that they put in every home, not just one, not one model, but every homes by Tabor. And so that's interesting. Yeah, they've always been first come, first serve. So I'm wondering if it's because of the market is so hot now. Oh, it is. And there's no, there's no inventory. There's very there's low, very low. We, we, we probably had only maybe 60 new homes. Yeah, I saw a stat. I don't know if it was from Oakmar or OAR the other day. Um, generally, for a, a real estate market to be stable, you have a six month supply of houses. Oklahoma City has 45 days. That's not a lot of houses. No. So no. sellers, sellers, <laughs> please put sellers, your house on the if you are on the fence, if you need to downsize or upgrade or relocate to a location home, vacation home, I want to help you sell your homes. We need your home on the market. Yes, we do. Don't worry about fixing this and that. Remember, we was just talking about the conventional. Mm -hmm. If you want to exclusively, well, let me not say that. Let me retract that because I'll get in trouble. But you can talk to me about some options about selling your house to where you don't fix a whole lot of those things, right? Yep. The end buyers coming in and having an idea about what they want to do with your house anyway. So what you going to do to it, you just wasting money. Sell it as it is. Get on from it, move on. If you need to move it to a new location, you're tired of having, you know, your house facing this direction, it's time for, it's time to sell the house. It's a great time make, to do it. Make your list. Buyers, like you got more sellers houses. have all the power now. Say it again. Sellers have all the power right now. Right now, they really, truly do. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Let me check on my Instagram and see who has any questions on here. Awesome. Hey, Miss T and Lady Faded. Good afternoon to you guys and Scott Stewart. Hey, you guys. I'm tuning in. And so if you have any questions, feel free to ask away. We just want to make sure um, the Gene, the Jenkins, the, the Gene Kempkins, I think I said that correctly. Hey, Derek. 
you guys, if y'all have any questions, we want to make sure that we get those answered. I just want to make sure that I stop and pause that. But I wanted to, um, I know it's kind of giving you guys a glare on Instagram and my apologies because I have my, my light on right here. And that's because I look in a dark if I don't have it on. So yeah, I have to have a spotlight on. So I, it's, 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 it's I, I, I have mine right over there. Yeah, it's kind of a glare right here on the side. Anyway, so. Well, this is some good stuff. Any other nuggets you want to share? I, I just think that you that just reiterating how important getting the pre-approval is. I think that if if we didn't sum anything up today, I think that that is you got to know the difference between a pre-approval and a pre-qualification letter. There's two total difference, and you want to have your money secured and locked with a pre-approval letter. That's for certain. Yeah, and, and it, at least get the pre-qualification letter. What, what I don't understand is why anybody would go out house shopping, especially with an agent, and not know that you can buy the house. I mean, I'm not going to go Ferrari shopping tomorrow when I know I can't buy a Ferrari. I mean, I, I would need to know I could buy that before I would go shopping. Absolutely. That's almost like, you know, how, like I educated in my home bars workshop, you got to plan buying your house like you plan for a wedding. Like you plan for those vacation cruise trips, like you plan for your girls weekends, uh, weekends, your guys, your fellows outing, just like you plan those events, you need to plan your home the exact same way. Your home with purchasing is totally different from renting. You can't just go up and rent the house and say, oh, let me put my deposit down, get your keys and you're good. When you purchase, when you're purchasing a house, you have to shop for your home. So that means you got to get out there. You may like this house, but if you didn't put that contract in and a right offer, guess what? You didn't miss out. So now you got to start all over again, right? And then when you find that right house, you better make sure that you got your pre-approval letter, your money secures. So that way, when you're ready to buy, hey, your sales is ready to talk to you. You know, they don't want to talk to anybody that's not pre-qualified. In fact, when we first went into the pandemic, they wouldn't even let you come tour their home if you didn't yeah, have that's true. Yep. So let's be transparent and clear about what we're talking about here. We truly want you to understand that you have got to have your pre-approval letter. Get a pre-qualification letter, yes. But if you need some help, get in contact with Paula. How can we reach you, Ms. Paula? Uh, you can get a hold of me, my phone number, my cell is uh, 405-808-4535. That's my cell. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you stick around there, young lady. We got some bills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so up next is our Neighborhood Jams sponsor Spotlighters. And this is the part of my podcast that I enjoy truly because it takes a small business and showcase them right here on the podcast. The number one fastest podcast coming out of Oklahoma City. Oh, yes. Not just in Oklahoma, but in all 50 states, as well as Canada, Ghana, as well as UK. Oh my gosh, I'm all over the place. And so I so thank you for my supporters. So my first queen, of course, is Miss Narissa Berry Insurance Agency. And it was a privilege to attend the fifth annual business besties this past weekend, hearing Miss Narissa Berry share some tips for us business entrepreneurs. But the most important thing about this flyer is the queen that you see before you, Miss Nicole Wright. She is an insurance agent out of Narissa Berry's office, and she is wanting you to select her as your agent. But not only only that, why would you like to work with them? They have multiple insurance companies with flexible payment plans, same day service, okay, discounts, and great rates. Call and get your home auto and commercial pricing with Nicole. She's ready to take your call at 405-255-9676. That's 405-255-9676. All righty. And of course, you know who this queen is. That's myself. That's my bio. Wanted to let you know if you are in the market to buy or sell and or sell. Let me say that. I'm currently in a transaction where I'm helping a seller sell their home in Yukon. So be on the lookout for that property, but I'm also helping them buy a brand new build home. So as soon as I get off here, I'm on my way to Norman to do their pre-construction appointment today. So stick around. I'm probably go live so that you can kind of see the ins and outs that most people don't share, right? That's why this is Neighborhood Jams with Sunny Pound. So as your real estate agent for the last seven years, I have helped secure more than over 50 families a year securing keys to their unique home. So why not work with a real established real estate agent, one that cares about you? I'm team you, right? I care about educating and giving you options. That's my passion. Reach out to me at 405-201-4241. 
And as always, you can always connect to me with my link tree options. And of course, I'm on TikTok now. You can also follow me on Instagram as well as LinkedIn. How can you become a Neighborhood Jams with Sunny Pouncil sponsor spotlighter? Well, it's so easy and I'm glad you asked. For the low cost of $25 a month, you get mentioned just as I've mentioned the Queens before you. And for that low price, it's no wonder that helps people to get more business when you're supporting that, right? So I want to support you. Let me love on you. And for the low cost of $25, you get four mentions or five, depending on how many Thursdays are in the month. So as specified there, reach out to me. We'll get you signed up and get you in the loop as a Neighborhood Jams sponsor spotlighters. Oh, my favorite part of the show is about the community. You all know I'm hard driven about the community. I'm very passionate when it comes to the community. This is why I have this podcast. And so please support those that are out here doing the thing for our community. And so for my first person up, it is those warriors. They're out here working for Jesus. Oh my goodness, I am so grateful to be a part of this nonprofit agency um, that is on the upcoming On The Ride with Miss T. Brown herself. Please send all your love and cash app as you can to Ms. T. 1969. That's M-Z-T-E-E 1969. The ministry and volunteers goes out and help the outside neighbors. I love that. So I'm glad you asked, what is outside neighbors? Well, you would probably think of them as homeless, but I love how Ms. T has characterized them as outside neighbors. And as my other queen will say, we're all just one paycheck away from being an outside neighbor. So let's help love on them. We're going, um, our next mission is July 31st, where we're helping to reach over 100 outside neighbors with love bags. And so we need your items. There's over 28 items listed on that flyer there before you. Um, anything that you can get as a quantity of 50 or more. We are also loving our Amazon lovers, our Amazon um, angels, if you will. Um, so those are people that have gone on Amazon and ordered something and sent it directly to Miss T. Um, so anyway, however you can do it, we just would love for your support as we're out ministering, loving on our outside neighbors, right? So the next one is coming up July the 31st. So make sure that you get all your items in in timely fashion. Um, if need be, I can have a drop off location here so I can help my sister help the outside neighbors. We want to show them some love as well, right? And then of course, my next home buyers workshop coming up uh, covering the milestones of home ownership. The next one is coming up June 12th. Um, it was going to be an offsite location, but I'm still going to host the event. So be sure to get in contact with me and reserve your seat for the next home buyers workshop that's scheduled on June the 12th. That's on a Saturday and it'll be for two hours from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. I will have a lender present and a credit mentor and I may even go ahead and have my insurance agent there. How about that? Just to make sure we give you all the basis, right? This informative packed two hours is going to help anyone that is in the market to purchase a new home. Come ask your questions about the lenders. Come ask your questions about the credit as well as insurance and I'll be there as your real estate agent. So what more do you need questions to have answered? I want you to, to attend the home buyers workshop that's coming up on June the 12th. All right, you know something that's near dear to my heart, 15 year breast cancer survivor, I'm appreciative to God, but only him to be getting all the praises, right? So we're gearing up for the third annual Cookies for a Cause. It is a breast cancer awareness event kicking off at the Stars and Stripes on Saturday, May the 22nd at 12 p.m. If you are wanting to donate cookies, you are able to donate cookies. Those that come to the event and has donations will get cookies or something or another, free hot dogs and chips and drinks for the kiddos and stuff like that. So come on out. Come on out to Stars and Stripes. It'll be enough park there for the kids to play. Come support a cause if you have a survivor or if you yourself are a survivor or if you lost someone because of the cause. We want to love you either way. But for the cookies, third annual Cookies for a Cause. Love that. that that's going out to my sister, Antricia Cutliff. Oh my goodness, if you have not heard about the Respect the Crown, let me give you a quick stop, real peek, real quick. All my queens, I'm calling all my queens, you have got to get to the Respect the Crown. It is a woman's empowerment being sponsored by No Shades of Grey. We're looking for ambassadors. And so if you are wanting to be in the vibe of other queens, help promote this event, get your t-shirt gear, as well as attend different functions that we're hosting for you all, as well as the event on the day of the event, we're looking for you to be a partisan ambassador. So we're looking for the state of Oklahoma, which will be next year in March. We're going to kick off 
the um, International Women's Month of March 2020 with the Respect the Crown. So we're going to be in Oklahoma. And now, guess what? Now we're adding Dallas. Oh my gosh, I'm super excited, you all. Tulsa has even reached out wanting us to come. So if you are a queen, be expected to get your semi-formal gear in place, get your crown and your tiara and come to respect the crown. We want to make sure you know we're tired of knocking off each other's queen or crowns. We are tired of going against each other. It's time as queens that we come together as one, right? As one and not just adjust your crown, but always to respect it. So if you are interested, reach out to Atricia Cutliff at 405-221-8204, or you can reach out to myself at 405-201-4241. We want every queen to know that you should have your crown respected, right? Make sure you tune in to me next Thursday, right, on Neighborhood Jams with Sunny Pouncil. But before I get into that introduction, I have to go back to my queen just to see if she's still there. Miss Paula, you there? I'm here. She is. Did you have any final saying statements that you want to share with us before you go? You definitely got to tell us how we can call you because we're going to yeah. here. Yeah, if you have any, any questions uh, on lending financing, please give me a call. My number is 405 808 four, five, three, five. And I know a lot of, a lot of buyers are scared to talk to a lender and they're, they're, I think they, they see us as the guy in the three piece suit at the bank behind the desk that's, you know, <laughs> tell them no, but I, I'm not, I just call me and I will be honest with you on what we can do, what your options are. And I will try to help you along the way. That is good information. We appreciate that, Paula. And I appreciate you taking your time on being here with me today. Well, thank you for having me. It was great. And make sure you come back. You got a seat here at any I will. Point. I will. You'll, you're going to get a fly swatter to swap me away. I'll be back. <laughs> So next time on Neighborhood Jams with Sunny Pouncil, you guys make sure you tune in at 2 p.m. next Thursday as I'm going to be bringing you some more information on tips and things you can use as we're getting you back to the basics in real estate. That is my time for this Thursday. It is Neighborhood Jams with Sunny Ponsil. Love you. Peace.